phone is dying. Huh. I didn't realize my camera was on. That was fun. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed that. I offered your mama some uh, croquetas and she refused. She says she on diet. She ain't no damn diet, not yet. Now her chest is hurt. What is that over there? I told you it's an African thing. Oh. A business? Yeah. And they're getting ready to celebrate Juneteenth. Oh. Of course, it's African. Why wouldn't they? It's hot. I'm kind of glad I didn't take the bus. road is this? Uh, Commonwealth? Uh, actually, this is Central. Ah. I'm going to go to Central, and then I'm going to go to uh... Eastway? Yeah. By the way, that cost you almost your whole paycheck. Ah. A special occasion. Yep. Yeah, it was, and you've been eating stuff that people have been bringing in, so it was the right thing to do. Mm hmm. Here comes resident culture. Yep. And what's, and there's Midwood Country Club. They're parking there, too, so if I ever want you to come pick me up from there, you can do that, too. But right here on the left is resident culture. Mm hmm. And it's probably midway. Right here is Sky Something Social Club. Skylark. We passed uh, Midwood Social Midwood Country Club is between Resident Culture and Skylark. Oh, okay.
think would be better, Eastway or Sharon Amity? I mean, they're both about the same. Well, we know Eastway is a problem, right? Hmm, I wouldn't really call it a problem. Okay. I go through it every day. Okay. to be a bit mental but there's this guy that hangs out at uh, 51 in Providence in the morning every time the STS bus stops he always he's always ranting and raving about some shit Hey, Dad. Yeah. When we go to Alchemy, I wonder if they could put the fireball shot in the bottle of Angry Orchard. I don't know, Joe. You drank a lot, by the way. Yeah. Seemed like you had fun. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you said, yeah, this group be arrested in Vegas. Yep, I did. Why you think that? Drinking and carrying on. Hey, it's one of your limos. Oh wow. Going the other way, 422. Oh, uh, it's probably heading to Lion Services to pick up people. It's 459. Oh. Well, it could still be headed to pick up people at Lion Services because STS is STS. You know 
how that is. I know Sanctus. Yep. Oh, guess where we are now? The ghetto. Marvin Road. Yep. My buddies from here probably already got home by now. Proposition. Okay. Well, the council says it's not leaving until noon, so. Uh, you can try it. You can try it. And chicken tender for that for bread, man. Charlotte, ninety point three WFHE Hickory and WFAE dot org, Charlotte's NPR news source. This is not a sweeping victory, claiming this is the same court that overruled Roe versus Wade. In a unanimous decision, the U.S. Supreme Court rules in favor of maintaining broad access to the abortion pill mifepristone. Today is Thursday, June thirteenth, and this is All Things Considered from NPR News. I'm Mary Louise Kelly. And I'm Sasha Pfeiffer. Where does the fight over abortion access go next? Also a generational divide over Israel with older Americans tending to think of Israel as an underdog. While Americans under 30 often see Israel differently. I think for a younger generation, Israel is increasingly defined by its treatment of Palestinians. Plus, we meet a couple in Germany. He is dying of cancer. So he created an AI avatar of himself for his wife so she can keep talking with him after he's gone. I see it. Wow. The tool. I don't want to give my knowledge and experience, and then I'm gone. No, yes. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Jack Spear. The Supreme Court has unanimously rejected a challenge to mifepristone, a medication used for abortions. Your Selena Simmons Duffin explains this is likely not the last legal challenge for the drug. Mifepristone is one of two prescription drugs used for medication abortion, which account for more than half of all abortions in the U.S. A group of doctors filed a challenge to FDA's approval of mifepristone, but the Supreme Court unanimously ruled that they do not have grounds to sue the agency. UC Davis historian Mary Ziegler says more plaintiffs are lining up in the lower courts to challenge access again. So I think the best way to read this is this kind of the Supreme Court kicking the can down the road. For now, mifepristone remains available in places where abortion is illegal up to 10 weeks of pregnancy and can be prescribed through telemedicine. Selena Simmons Duffin, NPR News. Former President Donald Trump was on Capitol Hill today meeting with House and Senate Republicans for the first time since the January 6 attack on the Capitol. Trump held an hour-long closed-door meeting with House Republicans before meeting with Senate Republicans at a campaign headquarters near the Capitol. Emerging from the meeting, Trump presented a united front. Standing group of people, I'm with them a thousand percent, they're with me a thousand percent. We agree just about on everything, and if there isn't, we work it out. GOP lawmakers have been invigorated to some extent by Trump's efforts to retake the White House, as despite his recent hush money felony conviction and federal charges against the former president, on charges he conspired to overturn the results of the 2020 election. President Joe Biden and Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky held a joint press conference today at the G7 summit in Italy, both praising an agreement by summit members even before the event got underway on a U.S. proposal to back a $50 billion loan to Ukraine using Russian, frozen Russian assets as collateral. Both Biden and Zelensky held the agreement and also announced the signing of a bilateral security agreement. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen touted the nation's strong economy at a meeting in New York today. But NPR Scott Horsley reports Yellen admitted that many Americans are still feeling squeezed by rising prices. Speaking to the Economic Club of New York, Yellen praised the country's rapid rebound from the pandemic recession, a rebound that's also helping to boost the global economy. She noted that inflation has fallen by almost two-thirds from its peak two years ago, though Yellen admitted more progress is needed. Americans are clearly very concerned about the cost of living and um, addressing the high cost of living 
remains a top economic priority for the president. Yellen also highlighted the Biden administration's investments in infrastructure, research and development, and workers, especially in parts of the country that had previously lagged behind. Scott Horsley, Imperial News, Washington. The mix closed on Wall Street today. The Dow fell 65 points. The S&P 500 rose 12 points. This is NPR. This is WFAE News. I'm Kenneth Lee. A state house committee signed off on one of two bills that would protect consumers from aggressive towing companies. WRAL reports House Bill 1024 would establish a statewide towing commission to enforce the rules for non-consensual tows. It would also be able to set standard towing storage fees as well as limit the amount of towing companies can charge drivers for using a credit card to get back their vehicles. The bill passed one of the Senate's Judiciary Committees yesterday. During the hearing, Lawmakers from both sides of the aisle relayed horror stories from constituents who said they were forced to pay thousands of dollars after their vehicles were towed. The measure must clear at least two more committees before moving on to a full House vote. It appears to have bipartisan support, two Republicans and two Democrats as primary sponsors. The Carolina Panthers wrapped up mandatory minicamp yesterday. One player who's soaking it up is veteran pass rusher Jadavian Clowney. A Rock Hill native who joined the team this offseason, he said he's trying to show younger teammates the ropes in the NFL. I'm just trying to carry over here what I learned from other teams. Um, I was younger, getting traded around. I was learning. At this point, I'm trying to teach them guys what I learned. Like It's really about having a good, positive attitude every day, knowing you got to get to work. Training camp is next month, and the Panthers open their preseason schedule on the road August 8th against the New England Patriots. And this evening, you can expect mostly clear skies and a low around 68 degrees. Right now, it's partly cloudy and 89 in Charlotte. This is WFAE News. Support for NPR and the Tiny Desk Contest comes from Capital One, offering their premium travel card, VentureX. Capital One is proud to support NPR Music and the Tiny Desk Contest. Capital One, what's in your wallet? And the listeners who support this NPR station. It's 506. All Things Considered is just ahead here on all, uh, here on WFAE and WFAE.org. I'm Nick Della Canal. We are asking. They're trying to raise money. For what? Oh, the fun drives? So why do you say that, uh, why do you say when I say this group will be a lot of fun in Vegas, why do you say well, this group will be arrested in Vegas? I was just making a joke. Uh. You know, according to research I've done, more people get arrested in Vegas than than almost any other tourist destination. Really? Even New Orleans? Huh? Even New Orleans? Yeah. And the main reason is it's something that I wouldn't really be doing. But it, it has to do with the prostitution laws. Oh. Because people have been told, oh, prostitution is legal in Nevada. Well, it is... But the actual law says that, number one, it says that it can't be legal. It, it's not legal in counties with 700,000 or more people, which... Um, Flower County is. Yeah, it has 2 million people. And it also, and also counties have the, uh, it's like, they have the discretion to, um, to make well, it legal. Count. Yeah. So, not all parts of Nevada, it's legal. So, people go and, like, people go and get a hooker thinking that it's legal in Vegas, and they get nailed. And, um, another thing is, like, it, it comes to gambling and stuff. I say domestic violence is, like, surprisingly common in Vegas because money... You know? Well, you want to know something? There was a study. I, I listened to a little bit of that study. They had um, 
betting on sports. Uh huh. And it's a problem. It is. I don't really want to. It's a huge know. problem. What is? Uh, people get hooked on it and they, you know, it's not losing a couple hundred dollars. You're talking about people losing thousands of dollars and stuff like that. Uh huh. They're trying to kill themselves and shit, so. Not a good scene. No. I really don't want to do it. I just want to bet. I just want to make one bet. Bet against the Panthers. So that either we win or I win. Tell you, but the problem with that is that they say, okay, we'll give you... Uh, Kansas City over the Panthers by three touchdowns. Uh-huh. So you have to bet that Kansas City is going to win by three touchdowns. Uh-huh. It's I mean, not... Even if the Panthers lose by two touchdowns, you don't win. Uh-huh. That's what I tell my buddy. My buddy, I bet my buddy some, uh... He sells pork skins at a flea market. Yeah. I bet my buddy free pork skins. I said, well, he said, the Cowboys are going to beat the Panthers by 17 points. I said, okay, you got yourself a bet. Anything under 17 points, I want free pork skins. He says, okay, deal. Cowboys beat the Panthers by less than 17 points. And he tried to say, oh, the Cowboys still beat the Panthers. I said, yeah, but it wasn't under 17 points. It wasn't 17 points. <laughs> yeah. That's how they do it. You know, Philip actually had to go and say, uh, had to go and urge people not to bet on sports. Because, you know, people would bet each other at work sometimes. Mm -hmm. And one time, somebody didn't pay up. And apparently, uh, the uh, person that they bet came to look for them. I heard that through the grapevine. I was like, uh, that could be a problem. What do you think of my What do you think of my buddies? Oh, I like some of them. Some of them I didn't. You know, Devin's a chef, or he was. He was. Before he went blind, he was a chef. Yeah. He said, um, so like his food recommendation, recommendations and drink recommendations, a lot of times is spot on. Hey, do some research for me. About what? I'm right beside an electric car called Lucid. Can you check it out and see who makes it? Yeah. L-U-C-I-D. Lucid. Uh-huh. You know, uh, remember we saw, you asked me about a, uh, a Rivian? Yeah. I heard about that on the internet. It's another electric car company. Oh, okay. So, can you check Lucid for me? Yeah. Yeah, Daddy, I heard that thing on the news about Gastonia and their microtransit. That seems really freaking cool. Yeah. You know that? Yeah. If they're able to pull that off and pull and, and do well with it, and other cities start doing it, 
especially if Rock Hill starts doing it. You know how you said you always wanted to move to South Carolina? Yeah. The only thing I'd have to figure out was is getting to work. But yeah, if I could, we're fine where we're at. We're fine where we're at. But they don't have micro transit. Not yet. Charlotte is too big to do that. Right. Because Charlotte has a huge land area and a million people. I mean, this is like, there is no such thing as being outside the service area under Gastonia's new plan. I'd like, I don't know how we would possibly, how we would ever try that. It'd be a logistical pain in the ass, but it would be really interesting to try. Check that car out for me? Yeah, when we get home, when I get oh, here. Oh, okay. Matthews might do micro transit. But no, they probably won't because they're in Mecklenburg County and they're covered by cats. See, Gaston County isn't covered by cats. Well, she said that man, they wouldn't go pick her up in Matthews. Who said that? S Savannah. She said they won? Yep. Yeah, because... Because she was outside the service area. Because a lot of Matthews is outside the service area. There's only a small part that's within service area. Like, you know, down, um, like downtown Matthews, that's in service area. And um, like along Independence, where like if you go near the park and ride, that's also in service area. See, no reason I didn't want you to stay initially because I, I didn't know how they would react to it. But once they start asking you to stay, I was like, yeah, you can stay. And then chicken tenders would be good. So are Chinese chicken wings. They they are a lot like Chinese chicken wings. You know that? Well, if I'm gonna get chicken wings again, you know you're going to Moosehead. I'm gonna ask my Sanctis to go with me to Moosehead. Do you read mine? See, but Daddy. What? Now, if I for some reason don't want to go or whatever. I never said you couldn't go by yourself. I will never say that. Joe? 
Yes. I love you, Joe. I love you too, Daddy. And I don't know if you figured this out yet, but I like hanging out with you. I know you do, Daddy, but you know what? What? Sometimes things don't work out, and that shouldn't be a reason that you can't get what, that we both can't, you know, achieve what we set out for. This group would like Moosehead. You know that? Yeah. See, my, the other group from work, you know, they always want to go out to restaurants. They don't want to go out to, like, you know, bar-type places. Because they would always tell me, make sure it's a restaurant, not a bar. <laughs> I don't know if uh, Debbie and them will like Moosehead. Mm. Now this group, they they, they they definitely would like Moosehead. Joe, you did do me a favor because I forgot to tell her when she got back. Can you tell your mother that the Valcientos want to get together for dinner? Yeah. For dinner when? I don't know. Whenever your mother can do it, you know. Oh, gee, I got to tell her. Um, me and my buddies from work are planning to go out July 13th, so I can't leave for the beach that weekend. It would have to be the fourth. It would have to be uh, the earliest would be the 14th. Because I still have to work uh, on the June 12th or July 12th. It is my birthday month, so you know we all bought Debbie stuff for her birthday. So I don't know if they're planning something. What did for you me. get Debbie for her birthday? Appetizers. He said it cost me almost, Thomas Street was almost my whole paycheck. No, it was all but a hundred dollars of it for two weeks. Oh, uh, well, hey, you know. That's what you work for. Uh-huh. And, well, and Lion Services paychecks aren't really known for being the biggest, but that ain't what I go there for. <laughs> you know what I mean? And B, I mean, I've been eating things other people have been bringing, so. Yeah, that, that. I have no problem with that. That was the right thing to do. What's the name of that car I told you about? Lucid. Okay. Still remember. We all drank. A lot of us drank, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> you know been, you know it'd be, you know it'd be an epic and wild and crazy night if me, Devin, and Karima went to Prohibition. Well, we are the ones starting trouble. <laughs> We were the one. We were the ones that were cutting up. Damn it! What's supposed to happen here? Man, Daddy, what do I tell you? Things aren't things. always as they seem. What you know? A lot of things that are true, Joe. Mm-hmm.
just because the property values are high, it's an affluent neighborhood, doesn't mean that things that happen in the hood never oh, happen. Never is. No, never. Mm -hmm. Never is. You're right. And you know, it doesn't matter. Like I told you, it doesn't matter how common shootings are. In any given place. If you're there. And you get shot. It doesn't. Statistics don't matter. A yeah. bullet don't care. You 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 could die. Yeah. Bullets don't discriminate do they? Exactly. I wish society was as racist as a bullet. Doesn't give a shit. You know that? Yep. And yes, I always say, oh, it's less likely you'll get hit by a car in Plaza Midwood or uptown. But if you do, uh, if you do, the effects will still be... Depending on where you are, the effects would still be the same the thing he, with a lot of these areas is the speed speed is very very deadly yep but like if you get hit by a car and like a trade and try on when the traffic is crawling uh it's not near as bad as when you get hit by a car on 51 when they're going 45 to 50 miles an hour Say. Sanctis. You know, Aunt, um. You know what I really was thinking about the other day? What? And there, few in between. Huh? There are few in between when I've been at, be able to get you. Oh, uh, when you weren't able to get me? Yeah, I got you one with that. The toll road? Yeah, and then, then they did have toll roads, and they're putting in more toll roads. Uh-huh. Because toll roads, that toll road, I heard somewhere that toll road on 77 has already started paying for itself. It's much quicker to recoup the cost of building a toll road than it is a regular road. You know who pioneered? Who you know who pretty much pioneered toll roads and stuff like that? Who? Florida. Yeah, I remember even back in the seventies they had the uh, turnpike. And they're not like everywhere in Florida. Like they're not. There are some, but they're not all over Tampa. They're real common in South Florida. Yeah, it's hot out here. Shit, I forgot my street crossing card. Hmm. <sighs> 